Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy that you are still here. Regarding this is the very last uh, presentation of the uh, of the workshop, and as uh, Wojta mentioned, I will present the work of Agnieszka Tomek and uh, myself. And uh, since we will talk about different issues already mentioned uh, um, a lot of times during the workshop, including uh, LTEC uh, corpus from the very first uh, presentations of so we will be able to build quite a nice frame for the whole uh, uh, workshop. So um, our um, uh, uh, agenda for uh, today uh, presentation looks uh, like that. We want to focus on the text corpora or text corpus as a resource. So we will discuss the issues of balancing and representativeness of, of such. Then I will uh, show you our review of Polish literary corpora with metadata quality evaluation and describe the need for new uh, literary uh, corpora. And um, our response for that need is uh, uh, 1920 Meta PNC, which is uh, the corpus that we were uh, working on. Uh, and I will show you all of the design considerations and stages of uh, development uh, of the corpus. And after that, I want to invite you to um, uh, join us with uh, uh, observing corpus in action. Uh, what questions, what research we can do with, uh, with such, and next steps, which are uh, future uh, goals um, that we want to uh, aim. So uh, just to start from the very beginning, the definition of, of a corpus is a collection of uh, machine-readable authentic uh, texts uh, which is sampled to be representative of a particular language or language variety. What is important for us is to think of verification of corpora in the matter of uh, finding and accessibility such and interoperability, because we often face uh, corpora with different formats, with different quality, um, uh, presented as a PDF, uh, corpora PDF text, plain text, TI text, uh, so, um, uh, we would like to see the uh, set of good practices in creating uh, such. And the last part is, uh, of course, a re uh, reuse of uh, uh, such uh, corpus, which is difficult be because we observe that very often all um, of uh, literary corpora uh, has been made, uh, have been made for one particular research, and it's very difficult to use them uh, with a different set of um, of questions, of, of uh, research questions. And of course, design principles, which are representativeness and balance. The uh, representativeness is defined as the extent to which a sample includes the full range of variability in a population. So here we have two problems. First, we have to uh, be aware of the population and all of the elements that are included in that population to represent um, uh, all, uh, all of them. The second one is uh, uh, balance, and uh, it's usually defined as the maintenance of appropriate proportion between the representation of the different elements uh, of uh, a variety. So basically, uh, we should aim uh, for the situation where no component at any level dominates uh, over uh, another. Uh, this is actually an uh, extremely difficult choice uh, uh, to, uh, to make. Uh, it could be difficult to uh, define the target population and to determine the proportions across text categories. So very often we can aim uh, such problems with historical corpora, where uh, limited knowledge of the writing of a particular era uh, is uh, present, which makes the decision during corpora com uh, compilation uh, arbitrarily. And the balance of the corpus is complicated by the disproportion between the number of texts from earlier eras and the texts uh, from later ones. And the very um, uh, well-known examples, of course, gender balance, whether we should uh, try to uh, um, um, cover numbers from the epoch or try to follow the uh, proper gender, uh, gender balance. So um, we've noticed that there is no representative and balanced collection of published novels that could serve as a 
preferential corpus. There are so-called opportunistic literary corpora that are created for specific narrow research projects, do not meet the standard criteria for uh, composition, have not been robustly described with metadata, and are not um, designed with reuse in intention. So the exception is, of course, the Polish language uh, LTEC uh, subcorpus, but we've noticed that there are some drawbacks, drawbacks and we um, would like to mention them uh, later on. So, of course, uh, literary texts are um, a sample of uh, um, a general uh, corpora for Polish, but it is definitely not sufficient for um, uh, literary research. Here we have um, two uh, analyzed uh, corpora by us. Uh, uh, there is LTEC uh, corpus and uh, Polish 19th and 20th century uh, novels. So uh, we decided to um, put them both uh, in a characteristic part and uh, with the issues. So you can see that for the LTEC we have only 100 uh, text, which, is, which may be insufficient for, for research. Uh, the other one is nine, nine, uh, nine uh, times uh, uh, bigger. The time span is quite similar, so we have um, uh, mostly 19th century covered and the first uh, half of the 20th century. For the genres, we have both novels here, and of course the language is, is Polish, but the selection criteria are different. For LTEC, uh, mm, uh, there is language, genre, time spent, and availability. But for the second one, the availability is the key. Uh, and uh, time span and OCR quality uh, were also uh, included. For the balancing criteria, the second one has none. The first one um, uh, shares the same criteria as all, all of the uh, different language subcorpora with date, reprint count, author gender, length, and author um, title count. What we've noticed, um, there are some issues. Uh, for published version of LTEC, there is an arbitrary uh, categorization of the text into four 20-year <coughs> time periods, uh, which not uh, covers uh, any um, uh, literary uh, eras. Uh, even the time span is uh, clear here. We've noticed text published after 1912, 1920, and unfortunately, there's lack of a description of the procedure for obtaining metadata, <coughs> and metadata sources are unverifiable. The second uh, corpus, um, the issues in the second corpus. So we have here the lack of manual verification by people with domain knowledge, incorporation of genres other than novels, uh, and text published before uh, 1800s and uh, translated no to Polish, but not Polish uh, original. There are also difficulty, a lot of difficulties with uh, metadata, the, the sources are, are unverified and the model is quite poor. Uh, what literary uh, corpus do we need? Uh, uh, we need a large one, definitely large one, to make uh, uh, the research uh, possible, reliable, so we have to understand how it was uh, being built, uh, what is the methodology behind that, that corpus. It has to be reusable. So uh, we uh, should be able to ask a different set of questions to the same um, uh, corpus of text. And what we've noticed, it should be balanced not only historically, but also geographically, which is uh, particularly interesting in the matter of Central East European countries with their history. It should precisely describe with the possibility um, uh, complete metadata and should also include uh, specific research questions and socio-cultural reality. So basically, we need transition from regular corpora to metacorpora. <laughs> and we believe we may have the answer or the preliminary answer, which is 1912 uh, meta PNC, metadata and rich Polish novel corpus for the 19th and 20th century. So we gathered novels uh, originally written in Polish and first published uh, as books between 1864 and 1939, with the time of the plot later than uh, 1815, which is the year of uh, Vienna Congress. Uh, and uh, um, these are stages of the corpus development. So firstly, we identify candidate uh, texts. 
from LTEC, from Polona, which is a service of Polish National Library, the Wolne Lectury Library, and the Polish edition of the Wikisource project. And we obtain um, uh, more than 5,300 pieces of literary fiction. Later on, we uh, complete the metadata for the collected uh, texts. Uh, so we used automatic metadata enrichment with the services of the National Library of Poland via Wikidata and GeoNames to have uh, persistent identifiers, language, and genre. Then we also enrich metadata manually by setting the, the time. And we built a so-called metadata model with author, author, uh, gen uh, 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 author uh, gender, Wikidata ID, place of birth with coordinates, title, year of first publication, place of first publication, first publication place coordinates, number of reprints, and number of tokens. So you can see the geographical component is quite uh, vivid uh, here. And the result was um, uh, almost uh, 3,000 uh, novels. And after the duplication run with uh, um, comparing uh, authors, titles, and years of publication, the result was 1,700 uh, novels. After that, we uh, went to the balancing uh, stage and we uh, balance the corpus by date, and we used here three literary eras distinguished in Polish literary studies determined by the date of first publication, and um, for uh, at least 20% for, for each. So we have positivism, uh, young Poland, and the uh, interwar period. The second, uh, we balanced uh, corpus by um, gender, and uh, the female uh, uh, authors are um, at least covered with 10% uh, of text. Uh, and uh, at maximum with um, uh, uh, 50%. So uh, the place of publication was the third part, and this is actually very interesting in the case of Poland, because um, uh, in the late 18th century, uh, the Polish was no longer on the maps because of the three partition of Austria, Prussia, and Russia. And we um, um, wanted to have the representation for each partition in at least 50% uh, uh, for, for each. And the last one was level of reception. So we wanted to have at least 30% for books with no more than two reprints and more than two uh, uh, reprints. So this is the final result with 1,000 uh, of um, uh, books included uh, in, the, in the corpus where you have the partition, gender, and periods uh, presented here uh, for the balancing um, uh, reasons. And a bunch of statistics. So we have here author gender with uh, almost 30% for uh, females and 70% for males. A literary period with 20% for positivism uh, and young Poland and interwar periods around 40%. Partition, uh, Prussian, uh, Austrian, and Russian, where Warsaw was lo located, and this is the biggest one. And we ho have also other where mixed uh, uh, places and places outside of the original Polish uh, uh, border, uh, Polish borders, and the reception with high almost 37% uh, and low reception uh, with 63%. Uh, the part when we want to test our corpus in action. So we prepared a paper uh, called Towards a Contextualized Special Diachronic History of Literature, Mapping Emotional Representations of the City and the Country in Polish Fiction from uh, 1864 to 1939. And the city and the country explains all of the pictures included in the presentation. Uh, so if you would like to uh, follow uh, our research questions and, uh, and output, you can use the tiny URL slash uh, meta PNC to uh, go um, to, the, to the text. And uh, mm, this is a funny coincidence because uh, uh, in a couple of days, our colleague will present our results uh, in the conference in Republic of, uh, of Korea. Uh, but just for the uh, highlights, uh, we have uh, several uh, research questions. Uh, for instance, did the level of discrepancy uh, between uh, urban and rural uh, depictions change over time? How have the emotional representations of the city and the country changed over time? And finally, did the form of the urban-rural dichotomy <laughs> and the evaluation of geo-entities 
uh, vary according to the partition in which the entity was located. So we were able to run some um, analysis on the, on the corpus, and we noticed the percentage of cities uh, mentioned in uh, successive years. So you can see there uh, uh, through the time were more and, and more. And the second example of the um, visualization based on the data, we ran the sentiment analysis of urban uh, rural entities and above zero we have cities, below zero we have um, sentiment for, um, uh, for uh, the country, for villages. And uh, uh, thanks to the geographical component, we are able to run it for um, all of the Polish uh, territories in general and for all each partition uh, separately. So we have Austrian partition, Russian partition, and the last one, Russian partition here. So uh, these are our uh, um, research uh, conclusions. So we confirmed the uh, urban-rural uh, uh, dichotomy. We confirmed also that uh, this dichotomy decreased over time, although the changes were observed, uh, occurred slightly later than assumed in the professional literature. We found that the negative sentiment of place mentions are also decreased over time. However, we did not confirm the thesis presented in, in Polish um, uh, research of dominance of the anti-urban myth in the depictions of the city and the country. On the contrary, we showed that villages were more uh, negatively portrayed uh, than cities. And finally, uh, we noticed that the, facial, uh, the, that the spatial factor matters, uh, which uh, clearly indicates the need to include the, uh, this the dimension in further research and include more uh, metadata uh, in that uh, types as well. And uh, here are the uh, next, uh, the, the list of the next steps that we would like to follow. So we have to determine the population of novels from 1864 to 1939 and assess uh, the representativeness of the corpus based on the query on the Polish National Library catalog. Uh, we have to uh, include more uh, novels, for instance, these with time plots earlier than 1815. Uh, we would like to improve quality of text by uh, digitization and OCR correction and balance the corpus by length of text. And of course, we want to enrich metadata uh, model and verify um, uh, our metadata using linked open uh, data. And finally, I would like to make the corpus available in TI uh, format. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Sharek, for your talk. Questions? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. This is very interesting. And uh, I was wondering which, um, which other than to use for sentiment and analysis, and uh, if you tested it against, you know, like human, human tigers. And uh, also, Lisa, I, I'm very suspicious always about sentiments. And, uh, Me too. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that, that, that would be. Yeah. So, uh, if you would like to follow the, the research uh, in details, uh, I would suggest the, the, the paper because uh, a whole of people was uh, included in the, in the process. I was uh, responsible for the research uh, questions and the metadata uh, enrichment. Uh, but uh, uh, unfortunately, we didn't have uh, time and possibilities to uh, look in all of the uh, named entity recognition uh, tagging results. But what we've noticed, uh, it was um, the results were richer than we expected. So we have wrongly uh, assigned labels or, or mm -hmm. uh, phrases to label a uh, uh, place. But uh, this is the reason why we included the second step. Uh, which is working with uh, uh, GeoNames API uh, with fuzzy algorithms. So we were able to uh, uh, run all of the names through the query in API to find out whether we have the real city there or, or not. 
And the sentiment analysis, I don't know what we used for that. Multi-emma. It's a tool from, uh, yeah, presented uh, by Polish uh, Clarin. You will be able to find that tool on their website. It's multi multi Hi, uh, thank you for making it work. Um, I have one question, one short question, and one long one. Uh, short question. What format? You say that you want to publish it in TI. So, what is the current format? For, the current, for so many metadata. You know, the current format is mixed because we have a text, plain text, uh, in TXT. Uh, uh, it's yeah, it's common blue format, uh, and we have the connection made uh, for ourselves with uh, metadata for each for each document. So now it's quite uh, dispersed, but we want to put in a in a better in a more representative format. Yeah. And, and uh, remarks, yeah. 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 So um, I asked the that corpus for Spanish novels and. I, it took me a very long time to decide how I was going to collect this corpus. And um, one of the things I realized for my case is that, you know, we have inherited many things from corpus linguistics. And one of the things we have inherited is the way they collect corpora. And the problem of linguistics and corpora, collecting corpora, is that they have created they don't, they don't try to define population as a statistical population. So they say, we don't have a population, so we have to look at the criteria and then try to balance it. And then they find a series of, of um, assets, and then they try to, to manage um, to, to balance this. The problem is, I would argue, that this strategy it doesn't have to work for the system. Um, for instance, in many cases in literature, we can work with the entire population. For example, if I want to analyze one author who wrote only three novels, I work with the entire population of this author, period. I don't have to make samples, I don't want to, I don't have to balance anything or anything. And the other question is that uh, the other, normally we don't, we don't do this, we work with, I don't know, Spanish novels or Spanish literature, or this literature. So I would say we should try really to define several populations. We don't have to think what is the whole public and literature of Spanish. You know, we can define different populations. Let's say, for example, um, there are there is these three bibliographies who were printed in the 20th century. They were very and important for the time. If all the novels that are mentioned in these bibliographies, this is my population. So. This is a way of defining our population, and from that, I can decide either I choose to collect all the works, or I sample, I randomly sample, mm -hmm. and then I just take, I try to make a corpus of 20, 30 uh, novels, which, you know, using the virtual statistics, they will represent the least population. Why am I talking so much? <laughs> because the problem is that we come to conclusions, for example, the representativeness of places. The problem about these conclusions is that you use also geographical uh, distributions for the composition of the corpus. Right? Yes. So you have a problem of circularity there. And you use geographical and information for the composition of the corpus and therefore, and then you analyze the geographical representation. But probably, more than probably, this is connected. Um, so, and it happens with the LTEC, for example, in, you know, LTEC follows also a linguistic, um, the linguistic um, strategy of collecting opera. And for example, they have decided a number of um, works by women and by male. If you look at the subgenre, this is completely different. So the works, the novels by women in the LSEC, I'm sorry, but they are they tend to be you know romantic novels, um, novels about family and so on. And about the male, you have historical novels and so on. So if you, if then you you know you try to look I have a question like, what is the typical style of women against men? Then you're going to find 
and you know typical responses like we will talk more about feelings, but it has actually has to do with this distribution of the different categories, and at the end about the composition of the corpus. Um, so yeah, um, I think I'm just mentioning that we don't you know we don't need to follow this strategy from linguistics. We really I think we really need to, to to create our own path and our own strategy. But anyway, you have tons of texts, tons of metadata. So in any case, you, you can you know you can rapidly um, um, remix your own corpus to represent all the populations. Yeah. Thank you for that for the voice. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was listening to you and thinking uh, metadata, metadata, metadata. So that may be the, the answer to make to add simply more metadata to try to aim the whole population. And then you can, of course, create a lot of sub corpora for your uh, own research based on based on that. But if you don't have metadata, you don't, want, you don't know how to pick and cherry picking uh, is something impossible. We, are not able to, to do it. And uh, one, uh, one remark about that geographical uh, component. So uh, you've seen the disproportion between uh, three partitions. So almost 60% for Russian. So uh, the circulation and uh, the printing uh, market uh, and identifying all printing houses may be also an interesting topic to explain why. Why we have so little here and so many uh, uh, books uh, uh, presented uh, in a different uh, area. Okay, thank you guys. But, uh, yeah. uh, one remark uh, to both of you and uh, one question. So, uh, Can be short or long remark? There's a guy called Lev Manovich who uh, invented the term uh, cultural analytics. It's not uh, literary. Uh, uh, a smaller, uh, was, uh, something else. But uh, he argues that we should have both a full population and also stratified samples because because there are different uh, types of research questions which can be answered by these two types of. of uh, it's it's uh, in, in, in his book in cultural analytics. There's a, a complete chapter about it with with lots of uh, arguments, pros and cons. So it's first to read. Uh, the question is one of the first slides uh, you mentioned. Uh, okay. um, you mentioned metadata uh, quality. So my question is that that. Uh, what, what was your criteria against the and how did you measure it? The data quality, uh, so um, uh, we started with the research question uh, about uh, the, the thesis that containing a uh, geographical aspect. So uh, uh, we uh, aimed to include in our model that ge geographical component. So our or original idea um, uh, was to include quite easily uh, presented uh, with three um, uh, examples of uh, geographical information. So uh, uh, publication places, the places in text, and uh, 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 first places for, for the authors, because uh, uh, they are um, the obvious one, but still difficult to uh, to follow and to and to assign. So uh, that was our uh, goal to include this this components, and we think that metadata model uh, should uh, follow the research questions here. So it's rather difficult to get the goal of the of the model uh, at the very end of the of the of the path, but we we think that um, uh, that. So-called Rolling Stone may be the uh, the answer how to make corpora reusable. So you have research questions, you add some metadata regarding these uh, research questions, and uh, propose it to the to the research uh, community. And if someone else would like to choose your corpus to work it further on, it can you know other metadata can be can be uh, added. So it's rather difficult to to say. What is the what is the end point here?
that it is much. If I understand correctly, there is no make and take the applications uh, kind of manual uh, verify on the corpus yet, right? Uh, no, it's not verified. Uh, okay. It's not verified, um, unfortunately. But we. Uh, no. I think that, I think that yes, uh, yes. We, we we plan to uh, increase the, the the quality. I think that, that would be fantastic. The, we think that as most of the uh, historical corpus for NER in UK, I don't think for is in there uh, as a language. So it will get. You will feel that you know. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? I think your last presentation was to give a chance to call me for the annual report of Swedish National Library. And now we have an extraordinary occasion to pose the last question of the whole workshop. <laughs> Please think about it. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> okay, so Matteo is the winner. Okay. So, if there is no other question as well here uh, in the room as well in the chat, I would thank you all for your presentation.